Hey everyone and uh, welcome back to my XGen tutorial. Uh, in this chapter I'm going to be showing you how I create uh, the scalps for uh, generating the hair. Scalp being um, the surface which the hair is growing out of. Um, now in XGen there's a number of ways where you can control where the hair grows out of. Um, one way is doing it straight out of a piece of geometry. Um, well, con sorry, controlled by a piece of geometry like a scalp, which I'm sure everyone's seen done before. Or another way you can do it is using a texture map where you kind of like paint in where you want the hair to grow from and the density will be determined on like how white, uh, how white the area is. So you can like feather it along the edges so that you get less density around the edges and stuff like that. Um, but the, the main issue that I have with using the texture maps is XGen cannot read, or from my knowledge, cannot read uh, UDIMs. And so if it can't read UDIMs, you have to uh, adjust the UVs of your mesh just to generate the hair. And to me, like that along with painting the maps is a lot more trouble than me just coming in here and masking out the regions that I want to generate it on and then exporting that out as mesh. So uh, if you don't understand what UDIMs are, I'll just open up this here. So this is um, my scene with the giant and this is his UVs. Um, when I'm doing personal work, I'm pretty messy about retopology and uh, and UVing, as you can see here, this is not the cleanest of, um, of UVs, that's for sure. But uh, because I have limited time on personal projects, I just pick and choose where I, I spend my time. But anyway, um, you can see that the giant is spread over uh, four UDIMs. Uh, and if I was going to want to use textures to drive the hair density and placement and all that stuff, I would need to move, shift all these UVs into the zero to one space, which is this area here, for it to then work that way. Um, which to me is like a big hassle. So uh, in saving time, I believe creating um, scalps manually in ZBrush is a faster way to go. If your character is only in the zero to one space, then I think doing going the texture map route would be the way to go. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like nearly all my characters, I use multiple UDIMs. So this is the technique that I definitely prefer to use. So uh, yeah, we'll go back to ZBrush and we'll start off by creating the scalp for the hair. So I'll go to this mesh. I might, at the moment I'm sitting on 11 million polygons for, for this head, so I might go down one. I do want to keep it quite dense, but I also want to keep it in a, in a workable state. Um, also, this guy isn't um, symmetrical, so if your character is symmetrical, then that's great. Like, as you're masking out the region that you want to designate, you can just keep it on symmetrical, but you can see here mine kind of stuffs up. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleanup. I'll keep it in symmetrical to begin with anyway, but yeah. Okay, so for this guy's hair, with the reference that we looked at in the first video, um, he kind of had, he was balding. So I'm just going to keep that in mind, like, as I, as I sketch out the, um, wh where I want the hair to grow from. So basically I want him to have sideburns and then I want it to come over the top of the ear like this. So right now I'm just kind of drawing the outline with the mask. Oh, so sorry for those of you, if you're not um, familiar with ZBrush that much, you just hold down control and then you'll have your mask pen here, mask pen tool, and then you can start to mask out the region just by literally drawing on the surface. So I'm, I want it to come down to a point here at the back, even though that's not really centered, I'm, I'll fix that up later once I get out of symmetry mode. But yeah, I'll start filling all this area in. Make the brush bigger to get that done faster. Okay, so he's balding, right? Um, so I'll make the mask come up here. Ooh. And then across. 
and then I might have it come up in a lump at the back here. So yeah, basically just, uh, and, and you can do this for anything, like if he was going to have a full head of hair, this would obviously be different, you'd have it coming up the front here and everything, but because he's balding, I just want to, um, yeah, obviously have a, have a balding sort of um, form to this mask. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Okay. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with this side. Actually, I might just might peel this off a bit. Soften that edge out so there's not so much of a sharp edge. And I might actually tighten this up too where the, where the sideburn comes in. Might shorten it as well, actually. All right. Cool. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'll just fix it up on this side because he's, as you can see, with this ear is much lower than this ear. So that's just part of the character that I wanted to create. So now I've, I've turned symmetry off and I'm now just uh, blocking in where I want the hair to go on this side of his head. Any breakup of symmetry is a good thing though, so I don't really mind if it's that different. The width of this though, I want to kind of keep consistent here, so there's nothing wrong with me etching this area back some. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Just make sure that we've got a similar look on each side. And then I'll clean this up a bit as well. Just kind of center that a bit better. All right. So yeah, I th I'm pretty happy with this. This is pretty good. Um, just overlooking it one more time. Yeah. And yeah, I'm also like considering how far I want his hairline to come down. Like if I wanted, like even for a like, the reason that this is kind of a creature, it's not really a human, it's more of a kind of deformed, inbred sort of character. Like, I could have his hair continue all the way down here and really, like, mask that in and, and give him this interesting sort of, like, mane to him. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of... Just get creative with it and... And, um, and it'll definitely help drive your character in the right direction. So, anyway, now that I've done this... I, sh I can go Control W, and now if I hit Shift F, you'll see oh, I've got some in here from um, an earlier test I did, but you can see that uh, that's now a polygroup. And the reason that I want it to be high res is so that I have quite a clean edge here. That's it's just to keep it um, pretty clean. If it was low res, you'd get jaggies, which I don't know. Just personally, it's not how I'd want to do it. But anyway. So now I'm going to duplicate this mesh so that I keep the original um, uh, untouched. And then I know I have some layers here, which I'm going to bake down. I'll also make sure I bake it on the original piece as well so I don't have to do this every time. Um, and then I'll go to Subtool, go back to this one, which is the one that I'm going to change. Go to Geometry and I'm going to delete lower and delete high. Um, I'm going to turn off line here, which then just shows us the colors. And what I can do is I can go control shift and tap the back of his head. And you can see that separates it out. Um, you can see I've got some interpenetration here, which I'll fix up in a bit. Um, and now I can go delete hidden. And now by doing that, I have a scalp, a perfect scalp ready. Well, it's not quite ready to go. It's a bit dense. So, yeah, if I put the line back on, you can see how dense it is. And I don't want it to be that dense. So what I'm going to do is Shift F, by the way, is the hot key to turn that on and off. Um, I'm going to go to Z plugin here, and I'm going to go to Decimation Master. And I'm going to go Pre-Process Current. So what this is going to do is it's going to triangulate this down so it's not as dense. Um, and it'll also help me clean up the edges. 
So I'll hit Shift F just to show you what's gonna happen here if you haven't used this tool before. But you can see the density of the mesh and then I can set this down to, let's try 1% and I'll go decimate current. And you can see that should at, uh, maybe I'll go five just to be safe. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna affect the silhouette too much. And I'll go decimate. And you can see this is considerably uh, reduced the, uh, the density of the mesh. And now what I will do is, um, I'll hit Shift F. And yeah, you can see, like I still even have all these details. Like it's a bit crunchy, but that doesn't matter. We're only generating hair off this. Now this is a problematic area. So what I'm gonna do next, I'll just hide the teeth and stuff so they're not as distracting. Um, I'm gonna Z remesh it. So let's go down to geometry, Z remesh, and let's do it 5,000 and Z remesh. Okay, so now you can see it's even lower in poly count now and it's quite clean. And now if we match it, I'm, I'll do a projection in a sec, but it's still matching pretty closely to the original, which is great. Um, and now I can clean up these areas. So I'm just gonna hold down shift to smooth these areas. Just cause I don't want, I don't want hairs generating inside the, inside the head there. And now I'm gonna do another Z remesh just because these areas are, are a bit funky. So we'll hit that and now we'll go Z remesh again. Look at that. Cleaned it right up, it's amazing. Such a good tool. Uh, now I'll bring this back and you can see it's not quite sitting 100% on top over here. So then I can just go to project, um, turn off PA blur and go project all. And now I know that it's basically on top of the surface. All right, so that's uh, one piece done. That's the first piece of the scalp done basically. So next up, We'll go back to this, uh, go back to the original head. And now I'm gonna keep this here as a guide uh, because I'm gonna now do where he's balding on top, that kind of wispy hair region. Here, I'll bring up my reference again. So we just generated this area here. This guy, is, is it's a bit higher up in this region, but I, I'm basic. I'm also going off silhouette. Like you don't have to stick to your reference 100% unless I was trying to match this guy like on point. But anyway, on top, uh, it's more wispy and it comes forward a lot further than obviously the side scalp does. So I'm gonna create this one next, but I wanted to overlap with this this other this side scalp is at the same time so that they kind of blend into each other as you can see they're doing here. So that's kind of my, that's gonna be my process for this one. So I'll go into um, uh, uh, what's this called? Damn, symmetry. I'll go into symmetry, and then um, just start masking out the top here. Now I can hit Shift F, and I can see where this one is in comparison. And I kind of want them to overlap at the back here. I might make it wider because I want these two areas to really uh, intersect at this point. All right, I'll hit Shift F just to see how the shape's going. And yeah, it's just like a little skull cap thing. Let's make sure it's going down at the back here. Might make it a bit more bulbous up the front. There we go. Maybe not. I want to have like a kind of a clean line going back this way. So we'll see how they're intersecting and that's looking pretty good, to tell you the truth. And now I'll hit Control W. And I'm just gonna turn off um, the line. I just want to get a different color there by hitting group visible. 
And you can kind of see like where his hairline's gonna be. And this is like you can imagine he, he had a um a really high widow's peak, which is just constantly um been balding back, which is like how a lot of people bald. If you if you look at reference, you'll see that sometimes what happens is the widow's peak will actually come around and connect back and you'll just have a spot of hair here. Or like which um what you'll find a lot of the time is people will bald from this area here and then around. So yeah, you just look at more reference for people balding and stuff like that to get a good idea of what you need to achieve. Um, but yeah, this is going to be my next piece. So once again, I'm going to duplicate this guy. I'll hide the original. Um, I'm going to go to geometry and delete lower and higher. And then I'm going to click this. All right, control shift click on this poly group to hide the rest and then go delete hidden. Now, I, I don't think I'm going to bother decimating this piece. We'll just see, because sometimes it'll work just fine going straight to Z remesh. Sometimes you need to decimate. Um, depending on the density of the mesh is normally how I how I account for that. So let's go here. We'll set this to five again, and we'll do Z remesh. And now, if this was lower poly, um, you'll end up getting a lot of jaggies along the side when you use Z remesh. But if it's really dense, it'll yeah. See, it's doing it here. So see how we're getting a lot of this? I don't want that, that's just too messy. So um, by doing the um, the decimation, you can go pre-process, decimate, and now when we Z remesh, you'll see we get it clean. So that's just one way to get around that and, and have a clean result. So there you go. It's pretty dense for what it is, but I'm not too worried about it. We're just generating hair off it. Also, um, just a decimated piece of mesh can also be used. So it doesn't have to be quads if you don't want to have to clean it up the way I am. Actually, this is doesn't need to be this dense. So let's go to one Z remesh. There we go. Um, so yeah, but, but at the same time, I'm getting a lower poly count. So it, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter. For, it really doesn't. Um, okay, let's go to subtool. And now we have our two scalps. These are the scalps for the head. So now we'll go on to the next one. Um, I'll hide that. I'm getting this weird issue where um, the alt pops up. Oh, it's gone away now. All right, cool. Um, Shift F to turn that off. Now, the next area I'm going to do is probably going to be the beard. So, let's start masking that out. So, we can see where this has come in. And I, once again, I want this to kind of overlap into the beard. Uh, if we go back to the reference, you can see the beard comes down, hooks into a moustache, which, yeah, I think I'm going to do. Um, and then comes down, we have a bit of a bald patch here and then goes up under the lip. And it also goes down on the neck a fair bit, which gives him this really unshaven sort of look. Because normally when someone grooms their beard, they'd like shave off the neck and they'd like clean up on this edge and all that stuff. So we want to try and mimic this. And also the distance from the ear is pretty interesting. How it hugs the ear pretty tight up here from where the hair is coming down. But then the gap here is... Um, much more significant. So I I might follow that. Like he's got quite a big gap here behind the ear as well, but I haven't followed that in mine. So yeah, you just take the reference where you want to really, from, from where you want to, just as long as you'll keep, like one of the biggest things is less about placement and more about how the hair falls and flows, which we'll come into a lot more um, once we're actually in X-Gen. So, Coming in here, um, I've got symmetry on, and that's uh, probably too close. Come in and start masking this out. So once again, I'm just gonna be like drawing the general outline of the beard. And I know we're also gonna want it on the mo here. Mo 
Mo is a, another word for moustache here in Australia, so I'm not sure if uh, any other countries really use that term, but just to, just to confirm with you there. All right, now we'll come down. I'm lo leaving these gaps here like the guy had in the reference. I too have these bald spots here when I attempt to grow a beard, but um, yeah, it should help. He looks kind of funny <laughs> with this. Uh, so we'll do under the neck as well to give him that really unshaven sort of look. And now I think we're gonna have to turn off symmetry in a sec. Yeah, I'll do it now. All right, so symmetry's off. I don't wanna have it here. I actually would want it. Mm. There we go. And I want it to come up pretty close to the nose up here. So yeah, you're really just defining where you want the hair to be. That's that's literally all you're doing. There's nothing really special about this process. You're just generating um, scalps of mesh, which you'll then have hair generated on top of them. And it's quite effective, this, this method, I found. All right, I don't want it so close to this lip here. Because at the same, you've also got to imagine when you're doing this, like, so the moustache is actually going to be hanging down. And so I don't really want it to be covering up his top lip too much. So I might actually reduce, push it back a bit into the... Uh, up up the mouth because yeah as I just said this is I don't want it falling into the mouth depending on what length I go for but um, yeah just in case I might make this part wider and on this side too all right now we're getting somewhere all right this isn't very even so oh so I'm gonna mask a bit more on this side there we go and like if you if you imagine there being hair here like you know how on cartoon characters sometimes they'll do a beard as just a as a tonal change like Homer Simpson um, if you, you can kind of imagine like oh, okay this is where the hair is gonna be um, to me it looks like there's too much on the neck there I'm basically just looking at the silhouette of where the hair is going to be and I'm just deciding okay I want to trim that and then I don't really want it this low I've decided so I'll trim that out as well and that's looking better I think that's in a in a better spot <laughs> I have a feeling this mo is going to be hilarious and it might not be what I want to go for for this character but it's worth a shot at the moment, this does look very trimmed and clean, but that's just because all we all we have is a tonal variance. But once I add like the messiness to the hair and all that stuff, it should really start to um, come out, like looking a lot more like like I want it to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift F and I'm going to see how this is connecting up here. Um, and as I said, I want it to penetrate a bit with the other one, like I want it to blend with it a bit. And I think that's enough. Now on this side, same same deal. I want it to blend a little bit. Yeah, just like that. There we go. All right. So now we've got a pretty solid beard happening here. I'm not sure. I'm just checking these two regions. I think this one's not big enough. I mean, it's too big. I gotta cut it down a bit. I'm just. Once again, there's a lot of asymm asymmetry going on, so it doesn't have to be the same. Like, his mouth is quite contorted. 
All right, cool. All right, I'm pretty happy with this, so let's go. One more double check, just make sure I don't didn't miss some in these creases. All right, so now I'll go Control W, and then separate out where the beard is, so we're only looking at the beard. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Duplicate first, I don't wanna destroy my original mesh. Control Shift to click the beard. Um, go to geometry, delete lower, delete higher, delete hidden, and then pre-process current for the decimation. Hit Shift F to see what's gonna happen. Decimate current, and there we go, looks solid. And then, oh, let's make sure we don't have any interpenet. Yeah, see we got penetrating geo here, so I'll do what I did for the scalp, and I'll go um, Z remesh to five, I think would be the best. And then I'll, oh, they already kind of clean themselves up, but I'll just smooth these out a bit. Got a bit of a weirdness happening, happening over here, so I'll try Z remesh again. Sometimes you can hold down Alt and hit Z remesh and it should do yeah, it'll do something different. Like, it's got two different algorithms for Z remeshing. So by hitting Alt, it'll do like a different algorithm and, and that just cleaned up that area quite nicely. So um, I'm now gonna check and make sure that it that could work better. So now I'll project onto the original. And there we go. Easy as that. So that's the beard scalp done. Um, so we still need to do the eyebrows, eyelashes, and peach fuzz. Uh, but so you, if you guys needed to have a break or something, I'll split that out into the next video. Considering we've already done a, f a fair bit in this video alone, so um, yeah, I'll see you back in the next in the next chapter for for the rest of the scalp generation.